Fortress Malta has for centuries been virtually impregnable. Foreign invaders repelled by its defences, an island standing alone in the Mediterranean. But now Malta is in danger of falling to dirty money, and the one journalist who dared the most to tell the story has been assassinated. Daphne Caruana Galizia spent her life asking questions of those in power. Questions about the sale of passports, questions about government corruption, questions about a breakdown in the rule of law. Her assassination may have silenced her, but the questions she was asking, they haven't gone away. What on earth is going on on Malta? Daphne Caruana Galizia was Malta's most fearless investigative journalist. She was blown up in October, driving away from her house. The fifth person to die in a car bomb in seven years. We're on our way to the scene of the crime. Three men have been charged. They deny the murder. Newspapers in Italy and Malta have reported investigators triangulated their whereabouts by tracking mobile phone use at the moment the bomb went off. The police believe there was a spotter on land on a hill overlooking the road down which Daphne Caruana Galizia was driving. Once the spotter had identified Daphne, he then phoned his accomplice. He's the trigger man and he's on a boat offshore. The trigger man presses a button and a remote control device explodes underneath Daphne's car and the journalist is dead. The waters that Daphne was fishing in were much darker than even she imagined. The three accused worked in a warehouse and had been suspected of underworld activity. They'd never crossed Daphne's radar. Many suspect they were hired hands. Daphne has never ever mentioned these three persons in none of her 20,000 articles plus. So it's obvious and it's an open secret that these are not the persons who commissioned the murder and we will not rest until we know who commissioned the murder and what was the motive. Jason Azapardi believes the question is not who carried out the killing but who ordered the hit. Over the years Daphne worked on many stories and made a lot of enemies on the island and beyond. At the time of her death Daphne was working on four major investigations. First, the sale of Maltese passports, a trade worth 310 million euro to people from outside the European Union. Malta is the only state in the EU that sells passports so aggressively in this fashion. Some worry that many buying those passports are dodgy, and so is their money, that Malta is being used as a backdoor by rich Russian gangsters and others to enter the EU. The passport scheme. The source of corruption. Who's buying these passports? The majority, it seems to be Russians and Middle Easterns, but principally Russians. Are they um, honest, law-abiding, hard-working Russian what I can citizens? Say, what I can say is that the due diligence leaves much to be desired in the sense that the European Commission demanded a 12-month residency requirement, whereas these people are barely spending one hour in Malta. <laughs> The passport trade brings so many millions of euros into government coffers, but the Prime Minister travels the world flogging Maltese citizenship. But Daphne's murder has opened a can of worms, and many of those worms are at the heart of government. Manuel Delia is a blogger and investigative journalist. He hopes to carry on Daphne's work. He's installed extra security in his home. The Prime Minister is the front man for the promotion. And let's be clear, they're selling European passports. It's true it has a Maltese coat of arms on the front, but this gives them freedom of movement of themselves and of their capital throughout Europe. It's Republic Day on Malta. Ties with Britain, the old colonial power, still linger. Prime Minister and passport seller-in-chief Joseph Muscat reviews the troops. Daphne's second target was a group of senior government figures, including the Prime Minister's wife, Michelle Muscat, 
alleged to be making use of secretive shell companies in Panama. The Panama Papers scandal revealed that the Prime Minister's Chief of Staff, Keith Shembury, and Senior Minister Conrad Mitzi owned shell companies in Panama. All concerned deny any wrongdoing. One senior investigator in the island's anti-money laundering unit was looking into the scandal when he was called in to his boss's office. This summer, you were investigating two of the Prime Minister's closest associates and a company widely believed to have been owned by his wife. What happened to you then? They fired me and they fired my colleague. Was that a proper thing for the government of Malta to do? It is highly unethical. But, and uh, we believe that there was political interference. Were you got at by the Prime Minister's office? I don't know by whom, but for sure, uh, the mastermind of this all wants to keep things secret. The suspicion is that the secretive shell companies that emerged in the Panama Papers could be used to receive bribes. Jonathan Ferris believes there is something rotten in the state of Malta. He's got some police protection, but he's all too aware of what could happen. Following uh, the 16th of October, what happened to Daphne Caruana Galizia, I sat down, I divided my notes and my workings and my information into six different envelopes with specific notes. They are distributed to six members of family, friends and close friends. And should something happen to me abruptly, if let's say I'm killed, all that information will go public at once. Her third major investigation was into Palatis Bank, run by an Iranian. Clients of the bank are believed to include children of Ilham Aliyev, president of the fabulously corrupt regime of Azerbaijan. In her blog, Daphne argued that Malta was fast becoming world money laundering central, and she leaked a report by Malta's anti-money laundering agency into the bank. The report accused the bank of turning a blind eye to proper compliance and highlighted systemic issues of grave concern. After Daphne leaked that report, the findings of a second report into Pilatus Bank by the anti-money laundering agency emerged. That said that its shortcomings no longer subsist. The bank which is housed in this building in Valletta, cites the second report and other evidence to say the allegations against it are false and baseless, and it complies with all its anti-money laundering obligations. Daphne also alleged that the whistleblower told her that a company owned by the Azerbaijan president's daughter paid a million dollars to a Panama company owned by the prime minister's wife, Michelle Muscat. All concerned deny any wrongdoing. But the fear is that Malta is making it too easy for dirty money to get into the EU. If you have nothing to hide, you don't go set up secret accounts in Panama. You go to your local Barclays. On Malta, the rule of law does not seem to bite on the Prime Minister and his clique. A group of Euro MPs who visited Malta after Daphne's murder found there was a perception of impunity on the island. Roberta Metzola is a Maltese MEP. What we mean by rule of law is that the institutions work, that the government is at the service of the judiciary and not the other way around, that when a crime is committed, you have to have faith in law enforcement so that that crime is investigated and solved, that if you break any rule of our criminal or civil code, then you are prosecuted and you are made to pay for what you've done. Roberta Metzola says Daphne was aware she was getting into treacherous waters. She has um, realised that what she was doing was dangerous and I think that came to a fateful end, unfortunately, and she was right. This country will forever be grateful for her work and for her sense of ignoring her personal security in order to get the truth. Daphne's fourth investigation raised questions about the integrity of the economics minister, Chris Cardona, she alleged that Mr Cardona went to a brothel whilst at a conference in Germany. He sued, saying he was in his hotel room 
Daphne got a court order to obtain his mobile phone records to pinpoint his whereabouts. They've yet to be released, but the case continues. If Cardona loses, he is finished as a politician and a lawyer. Mr Cardona denied any wrongdoing and declined our request for an interview, citing ongoing legal proceedings, including his libel action, against Daphne Caruana Galizia's estate. There's a gang that has taken over the government of this country, and that gang is concerned with its self-preservation and has eroded the power and the authority of institutions that should be independent of government. Daphne Caruana Galizia shone a light on Malta's dark underworld. Her murder? Was it proof that she was onto something? Proof that someone powerful wanted that light switched off? Was it proof of Malta's shame? John Sweeney there. Well, Government Minister Conrad Mitzi told the BBC that the Panamanian company he owned had never traded or had a bank account. He said he had properly declared his ownership of the company in a ministerial declaration of interest in 2015. The Prime Minister's Chief of Staff, Keith Shrembury, said that the Panamanian company owned by him was never used, but he did say, with hindsight, I realise that it was probably not the right call, purely based on the fact that perceptions matter as well. Malta's anti-money laundering agency, the FIAU, said that Jonathan Ferris's dismissal was based on an objective assessment of his performance and did not involve any political interference. Well, Malta's Prime Minister, Joseph Muscat, has given a Newsnight an interview about all of this. John met up with him in Valletta. What's been the effect of her assassination on your own standing, sir? Well, bad. Definitely. Because that's not something that any Prime Minister would want. Um, she was a very vociferous critic of many people. I might have been the top of that list. And this doesn't look good on me. I'm, I'm very realistic on this. Besides her family, I think if there is one person that has suffered from this assassination, it's us, just because this long shadow has been cast on us. One week after Daphne's assassination, where were you and what were, were you doing? One week. One week. A week after. I wouldn't know, honestly. You were in Dubai selling okay, passports right. for 650,000 euros. I wasn't, uh, we don't sell. We have, as other European jurisdictions, other European countries, systems by which, and programs, and ours is the most transparent and open program. People can invest in our country, can have residence, and even citizenship. Who's buying these passports? Well, um, various people, wealthy people. Not wealth doesn't buy you the right to citizenship. I had. It helps some, if you've got 650,000 yeah, euro, though. It helps, but it doesn't mean that you would get access to our program. The law, though, says that the minister responsible, and I believe that's you, the prime minister, can um, override uh, a problem. For example, if somebody's got a criminal record or is being under a criminal yeah, investigation. The system has never been overridden. Tell me about your. Your family's relationship with the first family of Azerbaijan? Well, I met President Aliyev, um, I believe, twice in, uh, uh, in Baku. Number of times when we were at the EU uh, Easter Partnership um, summits. Mrs. Alieva um, came here once. She met with my wife. That's it. That's the relationship. Nothing more? Nothing more. Daphne said there was a lot more. Well, <laughs> a million dollars. Well, um, you know, I don't think you can hide a million dollars. I don't think you can hide hundred dollars. Definitely not in a bank, you know, definitely not anywhere else, you know. Does Malta have a problem with money laundering? I don't feel comfortable in saying, no, we don't have any problems, or yes, we have 
problems. I'd say we have as many problems as any other jurisdiction, be it the City of London, be it Luxembourg, be it the Netherlands, when it comes to making sure um, that we uh, comply with the rules. In any way, I don't want to be seen. I know I'm in a quite uncomfortable situation having to criticize someone who has been killed brutally. But I hope we're not in a situation where in any democracy um, situations are such where if someone writes something on the social media, it's taken as a fact. But you're doing exactly that though, aren't you? She was killed brutally and you're saying that at least some of the time she was running gossip. Yes. She had evidence. You don't agree with it. You don't think it's right. But she did have evidence. She's got a whistleblower. No, I, she I, said I, she had I it. totally disagree because I read exactly what she said. So first of all, there isn't a shred, not only of proof, of truth in what she said on all this. She based herself on a person calling herself a whistle, uh, whistleblower. And the account of this whistleblower is dubious, to say the least. What I'm saying is that not only if there is evidence, if there is even the whiff of any evidence to this, I would resign on the spot. And yes, I'm sorry. The issue with Ms. Caruana Galizia is that she said things that were facts. She wrote stories that were cutting edge, but then these were coupled by things that were false. No, I don't know whether she knew that what she was saying against me or about me was false, whether she was part to this invention, or whether she was fed the story by this whistleblower or someone else, and maybe it looked too true, too, too, too good uh, not to be true. Let's put it that way, because it fitted the narrative that some people wanted to put in. The charge in a nutshell is that you're the artful dodger of Europe. <laughs> I, well, if that, that is the charge, I'm, I'm, I'm definitely not guilty of that. I think it's, uh, you know, it's preposterous. I do believe that our success story as a country might not go down well with others, but um, it is a, a success story that will continue for a long time. After Daphne Caruana Galizia's assassination, her son Matthew wrote, if institutions were already working, there would be no assassination to investigate. And my brothers and I would still have a mother. What do you say to that? Well, I have made it very clear that I would never um, take issue with um, people who have lost their mother in such a brutal assassination. I've said myself that if my mother was killed in such instances, I would say much worse things than that. Prime Minister, thank you. Thank you very much.